Call hello, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well over the flock. Shalom, and salutation to brothers out here pushing the words of truth and sincerity. We're going to get into the rawness of the truth and how that had everything to do with me um, leaning towards Israelites, you know, and, and, and leaving Christianity. You know, there was a long period of time before coming into the camps and learning about you know the bible through the israelites that i wasn't dealing with christianity you know i pretty much fell off of that maybe a good five years before but i was kind of dilly and dallying with it which most people do they kind of like halfway into christianity because it allows them a loophole to be able to do whatever they want to do as long as they don't do it on sunday well <clears throat> the rawness of the teachings of uh the apostles of great millstone and the elders of Great Millstone, the Connecticut elders, is what led me to um, uh, this truth, man. Is what led me to 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 believe in it more because I understood through growing up in Christianity, and Christian churches and Baptist churches that you don't really have to touch on everything, especially in the Old Testament. You didn't have to really touch on it. You didn't have to really go into it. You didn't have to really speak on it because um, it's just common uh, knowledge amongst Christians that you don't really deal with the Old Testament. It's kind of like the old way and now is a new way. But the rawness that comes with the Old Testament is what lets you know that you ain't people ain't trying to fool you. People ain't trying to one up on you. People ain't trying to you know, the apostles of Great Millstone, they're not trying to get you to like them. And, you know, it's not a it's not a it's not a, a popularity contest when you're dealing with the Old Testament. As a matter of fact, is this that's where the, some of the most gruesome things besides what they did to Yahweh Shah, the Messiah. So that's where some of the most gruesome uh, acts is has taken place. All right. So we always like to step back into the Old Testament. And, and 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 just deal with the rawness of the scriptures, man. You know, and this is where a lot of our people they stem stem away from, they walk away from, and they just not ready to deal with. Well, ready or not, um, the truth is the truth, and the wrath that the Most High is about to bring, um, this Old Testament and the ways of the Heavenly Father, knowing Him, so that you could fear Him properly. Well, that's why the Old Testament is important. To, understand and go through now the book of numbers chapter 31 is one of those chapters it says and the lord spake unto moses saying avenge the children of israel of the midianites afterwards shalt thou be gathered unto thy people and moses spake unto the people saying arm some of yourselves unto the war and let them go against the midianites and avenge the lord of midian <clears throat> Of every tribe, a thousand throughout all the tribes of Israel shall ye send to the war. So there were delivered out of the thousands of Israelites, a, a thousand of every tribe, 12,000 armed for war. And Moses sent them to the war, a thousand of every tribe. Then Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, to the war with the holy instruments and the trumpets to blow in his hand. And they warned against the Midianites warred against the Midianites as the Lord commanded Moses and they slew all the males and they slew the kings of Midian besides the rest of them that were slain namely Evi and Rechum and Zer and Hur and Reba five kings of the of Midian Balaam also the son of Beor they slew with the sword and the children of Israel took all the women of the Midian captives and their little ones pay attention and they took the spoil of all their cattle and all their flocks and all their goods. So now they're coming after the children and the women who were left alive. But they took them captives. And they burnt all their cities wherein they dwelt and all their goodly castles with fire. And they took all the spoil and all the prey, both men, both of men and of beasts. And they brought the captives and the prey and the spoil unto Moses and Eleazar the priest and unto the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the camp at the plains of Moab, which are by Jordan near Jericho. And Moses and Eleazar the priest and all the princes of the congregation went forth to meet them without the camp. And Moses was wroth with the officers of his host, of the host, 
with the captains over the over thousands and captains over hundred which came from the battle moses said unto them pay attention have ye saved all the women alive behold these caused the children of israel through the counsel of balaam to commit trespass against the lord in the matter of peor and there was a plague among the congregation of the lord it was moses saying he said look you kept you kept these women alive you came back you you went to war and slew all of these men of the midianites right our enemies and brought back these women have you no idea what happened well let's get the story real quick about the women which i already have here all right if i can find it if i can find it real quick let's get the story of the women what what is this what is moses talking about uh the midianite women <clears throat> Moab seduces Israel. This is in the NLT. Just go over real quick and go into King James. It's okay. It says, while the Israelites, as a matter of fact, I'll grab the King James. And the Israel and, the, and Israel abode in Shittim. And the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bow down to the their gods. So they was Obviously, they was popping. They was going into these women, these daughters of Moab. It's not we wasn't just staring at the daughters of Moab. We was going into them, all right. But we was also sacrificing their they get their gods. We was enticed by the Moabite women, um, through their through their you know through having sex with them. We was enticed also to join unto their idols. Many of the Israelite men at that time. It says, and Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor. That's their idol. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. So Israel was about to get start getting busy on the Israelite men. Who was um, having sex with these women and being turned away to serve their gods. Phineas kills Zimri and Cosby. And let's read about that. Verse 6. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses. And in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Mind you. Um. <clears throat> It says, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel in verse 3. That means the Lord started serving Israelites left and right. That's what that means. It don't mean the Most High is just sitting in, in a cloud, bubbling, angry and upset while we, we con continue in the commit whoredoms. And, nah, it means that the Most High started slaying left and right Israelites. That's why you had, um, it says here, and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, they was weeping because most I was getting busy on Israel. We're going to read it, read it when we read down. And so this man walks in with one of the um, harlots, Midianite whorish woman, who he also is one that's serving their idols because he's popping their women and serving their idols, which is an abomination to serve their idols. It says, and when Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the, the priest saw it. This is a priest now. He rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand, a long spear. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through. So, so you, some of these war, you know, just a side note, javelins was very common for war. <laughs> It ain't just a sport that started during the um, during the Olympics. It says, and he went after the man of of Israel, his own, you know, one of his brothers, into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So while they was on top of each other, as you can see, the picture being painted, all right, probably getting obviously getting busy. Um, <laughs> he thrust it through the man. And then it goes through the woman's belly. So he was on top of her. All right. And killed him. 
It says, so the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. So that plague, that fierce anger, that wrath that we read about in verse 3, the anger of the Lord kindled against Israel, that stopped immediately once that man was slow, 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 and that woman. It says, and those that died in the plague were 20 and 4,000. So 24,000 Israelites had died up until that point until that javelin was thrust through that man and that woman. For the abominations that was going on and the whoredoms that was going on. That's how the Most High gets busy. All right. You offend him. He cuts you off. He cuts your family members off. He cuts your parents off. He's cutting children off. He, he's getting busy. You think the only people that died was older people, 24,000? 20 and the 4,000 was older people dying off? No. He was getting busy with young, old, male and female. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Phineas, the son of Azar, Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, I turned away my wrath from the children of Israel while he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consumed not the children of Israel and in my in my jealousy do you see how much of a righteous kill that was more would have died had not eleazar had enough sense <laughs> and zeal to 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 kill that man and that woman who, who and, and because of that the most i turn his wrath away wherefore say behold i give unto him my covenant of peace and he shall have it and his seed after him and even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, right? It says, because he was zealous for Yahweh. So all his children's line has that covenant of peace with the Most High for, their, for what their, their, their forefather uh, Eli, uh, Phineas did at this moment. Because he was zealous for Yahweh, for his power, and made an atonement for the children of Israel. That atonement was the lives of these two. Now the name of the Israelite was slain. That was slain was even that was slain with the Midianitish woman was Zimri, the son of Salu, a prince of the chief house of the Simeonites. So he wasn't just nobody. Uh, he was somebody, but to the Lord, once you become a sinner, you're nobody again. It says in the name of the Midianitish woman that was slain was Cosby, the daughter of Zer. He was head over. Uh, he was head over a people and chief of the chief house of Midian. All right. So there it is, man. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Vex the Midianites and smite them, for they vex you with their wiles, wherewith they have beguiled you in the matter of Peor and in the matter of Cosby, the daughter of the prince of Midian, their sister, which was slain in the day of the plague for Peor's sake. So so because they vexed us and they and they and they tricked 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 us right it says with their wiles the wiles is dealing with tricks it says devious wiles devious or cunning stratagems employed in manipulating or persuading someone to do what one wants tricks ploys subterfuges right guile schemes so they schemed on us we're gonna make them serve our guys by our, through through sending them our women or right so going back once again, when Moses seen that Israel Israelites, the the the, the twelve thousand Israelites sent to defeat the Midianites, came back with the spoil of and, and included the women. He was like, "Yo, don't y'all remember that the Lord slew twenty four thousand of us because of these harlots?" He said, verse sixteen says, "Behold, these caused the children of Israel." through the council of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor, and there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. Now therefore kill every male among the little ones. What does that mean? Kill every boy child. And kill every woman that have known man by lying with them. What does that mean? Well, when you go into Genesis uh, 1 and I believe uh, I got it here. The verse is um, Genesis. Let's see here. The verse is actually Gen. Um, um, there's one. In, all right, when when Adam knew Eve, his wife, that's one of them. All right, to know somebody means to 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 that to to have 
when a, when a woman have known a man, it says by lying with them right here, that means she had sex with him. All right. When the scriptures tell you Adam knew his wife Eve, I believe that's Genesis, um, either the first or second chapter, or verse. And then there's a scripture that where uh, Lot was talking to the Sodomitish men outside his door and said, My daughters have not known men. Take them. All right. He meant they have, they're, they're virgins. So going back to verse 17 now therefore kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman that have no man by lying with him so every woman that has been with a man you kill but all the women children that have not known a man by lying with them that haven't had sex keep alive for yourselves and do ye abide without the camp seven days Whosoever hath killed any person, and whosoever hath touched any slain, purify both yourselves and your captives on the third day, on the seventh day. So the only ones that was allowed to live, that was allowed to live, were those uh, women that, young women that knew not a man. All right? So we can see now the seriousness involved with the father and the seriousness involved with keeping um, the the wrath, <laughs> the wrathful judgment of the Father away from all people. That's what it's all about, keeping the wrathful judgment of the Father away from all people. All right. When you go into um, <clears throat> just real quick, numbers twenty one and one, and when the king arrived, the Can when the king arrived, the Canaanite which dwelt in the south heard tell. That Israel came by the way of spies. Then he fought against Israel and took some of them prisoners. And Israel vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou will indeed deliver this people into my hand, then will I utterly destroy their cities. You see how we go to the Father for everything? And he sent his son. Now we have an atonement for our sins. And we go through his son for everything, for all wants and needs of everything. We, we've always been that people to go to our Father for everything. You see? Any, uh, any, 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 for all enemies, we go to the Father. For our adversaries, we go to the Father. For our demons, we go to the Father. For, for all um, tribulations and troubles, we go to the Father through the Son. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel, and they delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them in their cities, and he called the name of that place Horma. But going back into these verses about Slaves, man, slaves, captives, taking captive women. The idea that you could, um, a woman would become a captive, um, is nothing new. Is nothing new, you know, that idea that a woman becomes a captive. Now, when you go into Numbers 31 and 18, that verse, but all the women, children that have not known men by lying with him, keep a lie for yourselves. I briefly was re reading through some of the commentary and, and, and it was a general consensus that that was a normal part of that lifestyle. That was a normal part of um, slavery. I mean, a normal part of war was to bring back captives. All right. But when. Moses saw these captives. He's like, nah, y'all not going to keep these women alive. <laughs> not these whores that, that, that caused such a destruction. The most High's wrath to turn against us to kill 24,000 of our people. Nah. See, we had some sense as Israelites back then. Says so the Israelites, this is some of the commentary. The Israelites were allowed to make slaves of their captives. Shortly after the capture of these Midianitish women, and it may be as arising out of it, the law concerning marriage with captives was enacted. Um, the sword of war should spare, the sword of war should spare women and children, but the sword of justice should know not, know no distinction, but that of guilty or not guilty. See, the Most High don't care about whether it's women or children. He's learning. He's looking at guilty or not guilty. This war was the execution of a righteous sentence upon a guilty nation in which the women were the worst criminals. Why? Because they was bringing the men to serve Israelites. To, they, was, they was doing wiles. They was scheming 
to get Israelites to turn from our power and serve their gods and defeat us that way. The children, the female children were spared who being brought up among the Israelites would not tempt them to idolatry. Why was a female virgin spared? Because they knew not man and they're not going to be tempted um, to, to turn us to idolatry because they're young enough not to, not to know the wiles and the schemes like the older woman who did um, these whoredoms with, the, with some of the men of Israel. The whole history shows the hatefulness of sin and the guilt of tempting others. It teaches us to avoid all occasions of evil, to give no quarter, no quarter to inward lust. The women and the children were not kept for sinful purposes, but for slaves accustomed everywhere practiced in former times as to captives. And it's not just former times where slavery is going to be practiced. It is the future times as well. Why would I say why would I say that? Because it's scriptural, it's biblical. <laughs> Isaiah 14 and 1, uh, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. It's future prophecy. That's why it says the restoration of Israel. How is restoration of Israel? And the, um, and they shall, it says, and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Those strangers being Israelite foreigners. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, Edomites. And they shall rule over their oppressors. So whoever had us in captivity at any point in time in history, we're going to take them into captivity. There's a balance to all of this, man. Deuteronomy 20 and 4 says, <clears throat> But the women and the little ones and the cattle and all that is in the city, even all the spoil thereof, thou shalt take unto thyself, and thou shalt eat the spoil of thine enemies, which the Lord thy power have given thee slaves. Slaves then, slaves to come. Why to come? Let's read what it says in Psalms 2, starting with Psalms 2 and 8. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen, these non-Israelite nations, for thine inheritance. An inheritance, a thing that is inherited, a legacy, an endowment, a birthright, if you will, <laughs> an estate. All right? A provision. All right? Yeah. Those are, that's our inheritance. What does inheritance mean? The act of getting by legal right from a person at his or her death through heredity. Something gotten by legal right from a person at his or her death. So inheritance is something that you're supposed to be, it's supposed to be passed down, but it's part of your legacy. It's part of, it's given unto you because of who you are, because of who you belong to. So it's patrilineal by nature. It's, 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 it's nationalistic. By nature, okay, it belong inheritance belongs to the people your kind, the Israelites. That so the heathen are not our kind, and they are going to be given to our kind by the Father once we ask of Him for it. No, yes, we do pray for slaves in the future. Oh you no, know, we're not so butthurt over the Negro slave trade that we forgot the benefits of slavery altogether, and that's the type of spirit that. You learn dealing with the apostles of Great Millstone. Why slavery is very much needed in the kingdom of heaven. How else is everything going to get built? And who's going to build it? Is it already built or is it going to be built after this third world's war? It says, in the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. We're going to get that too. It concludes, thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So not only is you going to have slaves, we're going to fiercely and angrily rule over these slaves. All right? And that's going to be justice. Leviticus 25 and 44 says, Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are around about you. Shall be who? Shall be of the heathen. So your slaves are going to come from the heathen nations, which means that this is a form of supremacy, not your own. This, I mean, you're not your own. Your own kind cannot be slaves to you in the kingdom of heaven. But the heathen can. 
All right. It says, of them shall ye buy bondmen and bondmaids. And we're just going to be trading y'all off. You're going to be trading y'all. I'm going to have 40,000 heathen on this planet and telling the brother, hey, look, you know, I got 40,000 heathen right now. They're great builders, great stock. I've been breeding them since uh, since right after a few uh, millenniums, right after, um, you know, a few a few decades after World War Three. And I've just been breeding them ever since, and they're pretty strong now. And so, if you want to trade for your, um, for, I'll trade you them four thousand million knights for five, five thousand um Edomites, and so forth and so on. That's the spirit. That's the spirit. That's that's that allows us to understand the scriptures. That's the spirit. Well, let's get it. Very, 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 very,